Hi, I'm Daryl Crow, and we've got a lovely snow scene for you to do today in acrylics. We're going to use what's called a limited palette today. And what that means is we're going to use very few colors. And I think the fewer colors we get with a more dramatic painting, our kids are just going to love it. So we're going to be using phthalo blue, ivory black, and titanium white. And so again, I'm using the Martin F. Weber uh, Prima acrylics as well as their mediums. Let's just go over the mediums for a second. We'll be using uh, white gesso which we use just like we would a, a white medium. Uh, we have a flow medium in order for the paints to mix together and uh, smoothly onto the canvas and we have retarder gel which we've already mixed into the three different colors. Okay the retarder gel allows the slowing properties of acrylics to slow down. Now, let me repeat something because I cannot say it enough. Uh, acrylic dries because of evaporation. So as long as you keep this covered with water, it's not going to evaporate. So remember that because that applies to what's on the canvas as well. All right, let's take a look at the brushes that we're going to be using. The very first one is a one inch uh, bristle ang angle uh, shader and this is my workhorse. I use this a lot for all kinds of trees and foliage and clouds. It just really works hard. We are also going to be using a bristle fan brush. This is number three and we're going to be using a uh, flat which is a uh, uh, number six. These brushes are also all made by the Martin F. Weber Company. This is the Emerald uh, Museum and the Blue Museum brushes, the difference being what material. We'll also be using the hockey brush, which is the uh, one and a half inch hockey. That is an excellent workhorse. And we're going to be using one of our uh, painting knives, okay? And uh, this is for making the tree posts and working with the rocks. So with that, let's just go ahead and remove our uh, brushes. We'll uh, also clean our waters, at, uh, our brushes as we go in water. And uh, I have a bucket with uh, just just a ton of water in it. So there it is, just so you can see it. I'm not lying. And I like having a big bucket, so I have lots of volume of water which makes the cleaning easier, okay? I also use something like a small tray so that when I'm not using a wet brush, I can lay it almost flat down just like that. And I like this really long one because if I've got a brush with a long handle, such as my number 10 uh, Filbert from Martin F. Weber, I can just lay it down like that. Okay, so uh, these are the two buckets that I use for uh, my palette, I am using a stay wet box and inside the stay wet box I have 12 by 16 inch palette paper, regular palette paper and on top of that I have a wet paper towel. All I did was take a paper towel, uh, fold it up and uh, soak it in water for a few seconds and see there it is. See, watch my hand when I press that, see that all that water running out? It's really soaked. On top of that, we put the paint, and then I just take a fine mist spray bottle, see, just like that, and spray the paint. I want to keep that moist. I want to keep the areas that I'm painting with moist as well. Okay, so let me take some of our uh, white gesso and then the medium, uh, the flow medium, with a touch of white gesso in there. And so I've got my medium very close to where I'm going to be painting. So there's my phthalo blue, okay? And I'll just go ahead and get some of the gesso going. All right, so I want just a little bit more gesso right in there. If you ever feel like you don't want to put that brush in there, you just pour that gesso right out. In fact, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just keep my gesso right there on whenever I want. I'll go ahead and grab it. Okay, you can do that too. 
All right, let's go on up to the canvas. I'm using a 12 by 16 inch canvas today. All righty. Now, the edges I want to be a little bit darker than uh, uh, the rest of the sky. See, that's got plenty of medium on it. And uh, there we go. And very quickly, in no time at all, we have a nice little sky in here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and reload here in a second. And the reason being is that I want to cover the whole canvas, okay, with this uh, color. I know it's, uh, we want snow on the bottom. I showed you the painting already, okay. Now, if you feel the acrylic start to pull, don't be afraid. Just grab your little spray bottle and lightly, see how far back I'm, all right, and just spray that on. And then if you see that that's loosened up to where you're happy, then you'll do just fine. Okay, so we'll just go ahead here and grab a little bit more of that medium. And that is the white gesso. And I like to explain to kids this way. You know, color by itself is pretty good. But when you go to paint, sometimes you, you uh, uh, want to take your basic color and add something to it to make it the right color that you see. Because part of painting is seeing what you see and being able to paint what you see. So if you see something that's a little bit different than the colors you have. That means you have to mix something with it, kids. In this case, you know, with the sky being that we have blue, there's really two basic things that we want to mix. We might want to mix water, white because uh, uh, most blues are a lot darker than what we need. And so by mixing white, it makes it a lot lighter. The second one is because there's a lot of gray in this world, we might want to put a little brown because brown and blue will make gray. And so it's important to know what kinds of uh, colors make what. So when we mix two colors together or three colors, what's the color we'll end up with? And if you mix blue, white, and brown together, we're going to get some gray. See how that worked? All I did was take some of the water, all right? And I spread it on here, and it worked just fine. Okay, but I like to back the thing. Almost, uh, uh, you almost have to become a water expert, you know, to paint with acrylic. And that's okay. As you understand the property of acrylics, this becomes nice and easy to do. So we've got a nice uh, light sky. We've got blue here that we can use to put the snow on. So we're ready right now, if you will, to go take this brush and start to put the trees in. So I'm going to just press this brush down just like that. And we got a little bit of blue. And I want to mix some black in here. The thalo blue is a pretty strong cold blue. And a little bit of black, I think, is just what we need right here. All right, so let's head on up to the uh, canvas. And we want to put some far, far distant tree. Now, I want to move very quickly. Okay, see that? And, boy, that is just a beautiful color, isn't it? And there it is. Just want to make some tree shapes as we tap lighter, 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 lighter. See how light we get? And same thing over here. We want to go lighter, lighter, lighter. Now with uh, uh, acrylics, kids, because it dries faster than oils, we do have to move quickly. So I want you to keep your brushes down and I want you to be watching how I'm doing this, okay? See how I've made this the biggest tree? And then all the rest of these are smaller, smaller, smaller. Now, we also have to make this tree darker. 
So let's go ahead and get a lot of paint right onto our brush, just like that, okay? Let's come back up here and we'll work this a second time. See that? And that's making it darker even yet. Okay. It's still not quite as dark as we'd like, so we'll just go ahead and mix more paint and more paint together. Just like that. And there it is. Oh, wow. That's getting nice and dark right there. And we'll just go ahead and bring this down to the point it gets lighter, lighter, lighter. Now, if you don't feel it, I don't feel it's light enough. So, here's what I'm going to do. The very first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and grab this one-inch brush. It's just a bristle brush. It's like a 49-cent brush. I'm just going to get some water, okay, right there. So let's come down to the bottom. Now let me show you what's going on. In order for me to darken this up, I've got to add some reds and, uh, to this, but I don't want the bottom to uh, uh, fade away on me before I have a chance to work it out. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull it out as though this was snow right now. Okay, and we'll see why in a second. But right now, I just wanted to set those trees right in. Now, I can take the time, and I'll show you up here what we're doing. If you want your colors to go darker, we're going to have to add a little more alizarin crimson than what I had planned. Okay, but that's okay. We can do that. We'll just take a little bit of alizarin, not much. How much? Not much. All right, here we go. And there it is. See how much darker that becomes? That's exactly what we're looking for. Okay. That becomes a purple, if you will. And there we go. This is very good, guys, that you're learning about how to darken up colors. Uh, because this is all part of being an artist, to know when to go darker, when to go lighter. Okay. And there we are. Isn't that so much fun? And we'll just kind of leave that fading out into the blues, just like that. Okay? Now, let's grab our uh, hockey brush that we had been using with the sky and watch this I'm just going to take some pure gesso that's a white gesso and now we want to put in some snow okay so here we go I'll just put that in see and there it is and it's just straight across straight across and then we go over here Grab in some more. And just go ahead and pull in that snow from the center trees all the way to the side. See that? Isn't that so much fun? Before you know it, you got a whole field full of snow. All right. I love when things come together like that. Now, the next thing I want to do is put together that little hill up front with those three uh, fence posts. So we'll just take a little bit of the black and we'll just go ahead and just get a small little amount right there on the edge. And the first fence post will be right here. There it is. And when we 
pull that across like that, it almost highlights itself. All right, so see this? I've got a little metal ferrule that should be right there, but it kind of fell off a few minutes back. Uh, but in any case, I've got a small amount of acrylic black paint there. That's ivory black. See that? And there it is. Now, let's get a little more. And let's come over here. And we've got another one. And by pulling it, you almost create its own snow. And then all I'll do is just take an edge. See that? And I'm putting in its own wire. So it's just cool to be able to do stuff like that. And if I want a little bit of snow hanging down on that. And in fact, while I've got doing this, let me put a little bit of rock here. Okay, oh, a little bit of a rock. Yeah, there's a nice rock. I'll just put it in black. And maybe there'll be a smaller rock right over here. Yeah, there's a smaller rock. Now what I like to do, take a paper towel and wipe off my knife, kids. The reason being is that acrylic will dry real quick and it's a son of a gun to clean off, okay? So you want to do that. And see how I'm just whooshing out the bottom? Whoosh out your bottoms too, okay? Now, we want to make sure that we have uh, let's see, we got that. Let's see, let's put a little bit of snow on here. So what I'm going to do is take some of this and mix it with the titanium white. So I'm mixing the medium white or the white gesso in with the uh, titanium white acrylic paint. All righty. So here we go. We want... It's to come way down, just like that. The snow that's appearing. All righty. Then we'll grab a little bit more for the other side. That other little rock. And we'll put a big old bunches. All right, big old bunches of snow. Okay, now all we have to do is just put a little bit on the tops of each of those posts. So a little bit on the top, it's just a little bit right there on the tips of that knife. So there it goes right there and right here. We'll just take a small, small, small amount. And, all right. See how easy that is? Just a touch with the knife, touch with the knife, touch with the knife. Okay? Now, the one thing, kids, it doesn't matter if you do this right or wrong. Because you know why? Snow's everywhere. Okay? Snow is everywhere. Yeah. I know. I was born in Illinois, and so I spent quite a few summers there, and then I went to uh, Germany, and they got the same kind of snow there. In fact, they got some real big snows. Okay, let's grab that hockey brush again, and we'll get a little bit more of the white gesso, and this time some more of the titanium, because look what we're going to do. All right, watch this. We're now going to bring in the snow for that hill. See that? See how I just lay it in there, just like that? 
Thing about acrylics, don't leave it a hard edge. All right. When you bringing it over, finish with the strokes. All righty. So let's get some more. Okay. Bring in the white gesso. More of the titanium color, and here we go. Let's let's finish with the front of this. Uh, yeah, there we go. See that? Now we know where it's going to be more over here in the corner in a second. But just so it doesn't look unnatural, I'll go ahead and pretend that it's just going right off. Right here, right now. Okay, now where should a shadow go? Uh-huh, shadow, right here. You just go ahead and see if it's in any left. Yep, there's a little bit left. See that? Here's the shadow. See how great that looks, having the shadow? And all I did was just pull a little bit of that uh, bottom color of the fence over. Well, we've got to put a little bit of a tree in there, so let's do that right now. And I'm going to do that with this brush, okay? This is the uh, uh, bristle fan, and we'll just go ahead and get a nice, nice dark color. This dark color is going to be the black, it's going to be the blue, and a bit of the red. Okay, see how dark that is. Okay, so let's go ahead and go almost off the top of the canvas. That's how big this is. So we'll just make a line. I always like making the center of the uh, tree, the trunk. And then I want to go ahead and load up again just like this. Okay, guys, this is where it's so important to watch me. You see, this is where adults get it wrong all the time, and I've found that the only people who get it right to begin with are kids. So if you get this right, you still got to be a kid. If you get it wrong, you must be an adult. All right, so we just go touch one, two, three, okay? And then we just touch to make a tiny branch, drop down, touch to make the next branch. See that? And all I do is continue working downward until I get all the way to the bottom. See that? That's as easy as it is, gets to be to make a tree, a Christmas tree. You like Christmas tree? And I just go backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, just like that. I always like to go over to Grandpa's. Now, you see that? That's because we're going over his tree, so over his white gesso. So we can do a couple of things. We'll just go ahead and finish it like this, and then in a couple more minutes, we'll just come back and redo it after it's had a chance to dry, because that's the nice thing. This will dry in about 15, 20 minutes. So in the meantime, we can work on some other stuff, or if we want to, we can go back and uh, uh, make it darker and darker by going over it and over it. But right down here, when you get like this, this is a good time to go ahead and mush out the bottom for the snow. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute. See, we gotta mush it out and then we gotta cover it. Okay, so let's come over here and just put a, clean our brushes because we have to wait. But you can also go ahead and try it again. Let's take a little more of that uh, flow medium. All right, and the dark. All righty. And we can come back here and see 
if it will work. See? It's going to require us to wait. So we'll just go ahead and wait. It doesn't hurt. Okay, we're going to load up with some more of the uh, dark foliage color for this tree. So I'm sure you can see how I'm doing it. Okay, and then give it a little wiggle to sharpen it up. And this is not really dry yet, but uh, it's pretty tacky, okay, which means sticky. Starting to dry. Okay, so it's only been a few minutes. And there we go. See, just like that. And that's getting it nice and dark. That's what I like. Okay. And that's what you should like. If you don't like that, let me know. Oh, wait some more. But uh, this is the time where I tell kids to uh, let me know what they like and dislike about their paintings at this point. And, uh, and then you instruct them how to fix it. You can even show them on the palette paper, but don't touch their paintings unless they really want you to, okay? Because they're very sensitive about doing everything themselves. Okay, now I'm gonna take a little bit of the, uh, yeah, a little bit of this uh, color, which is the, uh, white gesso. There we go. Just get some more of that in here. It's the thalo blue. I think I'll just put it a little bit more down. We we don't show this on TV because some sometimes we think it's terrible that someone should see that we have to add a little more color. You know, and, and it's just unprofessional. Well, split my grits. All right? I can't believe that. I think it's unprofessional for you to think that I've got it judged correctly all the time. All right? That isn't true. I want you to, if you're out of paint, to come down here, grab some more paint, and go ahead. It's a natural thing to do. Okay, now we got a little bit of a lighter uh, snow color right here. Yeah, there we go. And we'll just put that right in here. See that? Oh, that's just looking good. All right, kids, see how I'm doing that? I'm just touch, 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 touch. Touch, 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 touch. Leave the left side alone because that's where the sun is not hitting. All right, and that's all there is to it. If you want to, you can take a little bit more of the uh, white gesso and maybe just at the top of that tree. We could just put a few bright ones. Now, it's gonna depend, okay, because it depends on how you, it dries, because gesso will, gesso and acrylics, they tend to dry darker than you realize. So if we just go ahead and touch this up again, We'll make sure that when it dries, it's drying still light. All right? Yeah, I like that even better. Okay, and you can see that there are lots of little places for the animals to hide underneath that tree. Okay, so let's take our brush. And the brush I'm using is the hockey. And I want to get just a little bit of snow right in here. All right, see that? Just a little bit of snow. Come right back over here, and remember this uh, area down here, light, 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 all right? See that? Light, 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 and I left a lot of it, and that just tones it down enough so we have some shadow. Now, about the only thing left to do here is to grab our fan brush, okay? Because what we want to do is we want to make some snow. And uh, for those of you not seeing what I'm doing, I'm cleaning it. I'm wiping it on my uh, rag. Okay, and now I'm going to take my little knife. Okay, my knife. And see, I'm just putting a little bit of the gesso right there. 
Now, this is a bristle brush, so let's make it snow. This is so much fun. So, stand back, see that, and just let it happen. Don't get too close, all right? Now, if you're not sure if it's coming across, just take some water, just a little bit of water, and mix it right in with your gesso, all right? Just a little bit of water, not much. Test it. Yeah, there we go. See that? Make sure we get some nice snowstorm coming in. There isn't anything more fun than a day off of school because it's snowing and you're at Grandpa's house. Okay, so kids, you paint what you think is your favorite day and where you like to spend a day at the snow while it's snowing. I'm Daryl Crow. I'm your instructor, and yes, you can oil paint.